Well, good evening. My name is Ruth and this is Fay Hollow Homestead and I am up in my upper food forest, which I planted last year. So you can see the trees are pretty small still. And to be truthful, I really haven't done a whole lot with this one. Um, I have another one that is down the mountain a little bit and I have mulched it. I have, you know, taken out all the grass and put lots of companion plants everywhere. This thing, I haven't even mowed it. So uh, excuse the, uh, the wild look, but um, I just, my goal for last year, I had so many projects last year and it's funny how I have projects every single year. That's just what happens, isn't it? Uh, but this, um, this year is the year that I planned on really just kind of turning this into more of like a food forest situation. So I'll get working on that once I finish my other projects. This is not top priority. It's trees and they're fine. They're doing great. Uh, yes, they would be happier and they would grow faster if the grass wasn't around them. But, you know, anyway, today, I'm not talking about that. Today, I'm talking about pumpkins. I love pumpkins more than I can even say. It is something that my mother-in-law and I share. <laughs> we love pumpkins. And uh, I have struggled to grow pumpkins for a long time. Now, the reason why I have struggled with pumpkins is because I don't want to grow the really big ones in my garden because I just don't have room for that. I have a, a smaller garden. It's not tiny, but it's, it's not like I got acres of garden, right? And I just don't have room for big pumpkins or squash. I really like winter squash too. I mean, it's not just pumpkins. It's all winter squash basically. And the deer here, I don't know if you see this, but I mean, we are right up against the woods. There's, there's woods all around us everywhere. Uh, it is, it's, everywhere and so we have so many deer and deer love squash blossoms and so last year I tried growing pumpkins on the hill by my lavender beds thinking that the electric fence from the bees would kind of keep the deer away it did kind of okay it didn't really do anything I got maybe like one pumpkin off of it and it was the size of maybe like a football I mean it really wasn't that big and I realized it was because that that area was too shaded, which is, I'm glad that I did that because I was going to plant lavender there and I didn't realize how shaded it was. And so now I'm not planting lavender there anymore. I put a whole bunch of service berries. I'm having a service berry hedge there. Uh, I'm putting a few crab apple trees that will grow tall enough to get the sun, but it wasn't good for pumpkins. So this year, I was lamenting to my husband and said, I want big pumpkins. I want winter squash. What am I going to do? And he had this great idea of coming up to this food forest. Because if you see, I have fencing around this. And I'm literally not doing anything with it right now. And so last night, like at 9 o'clock when I could barely see, I threw together these little boxes. We are building a chicken coop and turkey house and quail house. And so I have a whole lot of scrap wood. So all I did, this is really simple guys. I just took two screws in each corner and screwed scrap pieces together. This isn't even square. This is a longer piece than that piece and that's okay. And all I did is I stuck some really good thick cardboard underneath. I made another one over here and I made another one over there. And then I'm experimenting with pools. I don't know. We'll see. I just want to experiment. I want to see how it goes. I drilled holes in the bottom of these kitty pools. And then I went and got a load of compost from my favorite compost, uh, compost guy. And I filled it up with the compost. So here, you can see it has all these vines will have room to really ramble. And if they go towards the goat pen, they're probably going to get eaten. But... It is what it is. I have more fenced in room up here than anywhere else. So in the matter of, I think it took me an hour tops. And that's just because shuffle, uh, shoveling and finding the cardboard and stuff like that. Like it didn't take me long at all to do this. Um, 
I don't, there's no bottom on them. It's literally just sitting on top of the cardboard. And I just put in a whole bunch of compost. So we're going to see. And I'm going to plant my big pumpkins. I want to show with you, you the varieties that I'm going to plant. I'm really excited about this. Okay, so starting right here, we've got the Pennsylvania Dutch Crooked Neck. We've got the Tokyo Blue. And we've got the Marina di Chiogia. I don't know. But I'm excited about those. I love warty pumpkins. And then we've got the Winter Luxury Pie, of course. We've got the Delicata Candy Stick Dessert. And then we've got the Illinois White Crooked Neck Pumpkin. And over on this one, I've got my huge ones. I've got the Crespo Squash. I've got the Connecticut Field. And then I've got the red warty thing pumpkin. Let's see. Over here, oh, I didn't spread these out, did I? Over here we've got sweet meat squash. We've got moringa. And then we've got the Waltham butternut. And that's the Virginia select specifically because we're in Virginia. And then over here we're gonna have my they're still edible, but these are my more decorative ones, along with the red warty thing. I really love that one. This is the flat white boar, and I just think that's gorgeous. This is the Cinderella pumpkin, and then the Gentleman Jack pumpkin. So that's what we've got growing around here. I have to say, um, I do have pumpkins growing if you see there's like a little bit of a bed down there by the trucks you can't tell really but my kids love pumpkins too and so they planted a bunch of pumpkins um specifically like the uh the crespo the moringa the the flat white boar and the cinderella pumpkin and then in my garden down this hill on the other side of the fence of the where we keep the goats I have more pumpkins growing as well. So I don't mind if the kids' uh, pumpkins roam into the driveway a little bit. I don't mind that at all. And then uh, things like the red curie pumpkin, or I keep saying pumpkin, but these are mostly squash. The red curie squash uh, is a very, very petite vine. Uh, it only grows up to about six feet, I believe. Uh, and the Tokyo Blue, I believe, is a smaller one as well. But I've got those down there along with uh, sweet potato squash and uh, Mrs. Amerson's and um, Rampiacante and all sorts of stuff like that. So, but this is where I want the big, where you can't hang it from a trellis because they're too heavy, where you can't, um, you can't put it in a bed because it's just going to roam everywhere. And... <laughs> Do you see Chardonnay? Hey, girl. Hey, Chardonnay. What are you doing? What are you doing? She's so friendly. Uh, so they're just going to go wild up here. And maybe they'll even squash down some of the grass. Wouldn't that be nice? That would be nice. We'll see. Okay, so that is the pumpkin patch, I guess. I hope that it works this year. Uh, I have had not a lot of success in pumpkins, although I haven't really tried. Um, this is probably the best effort that I've given it with the fence around it and giving them their own beds. And um, I'm just, I'm really excited. I love winter squash, I love pumpkins, I love decorating with pumpkins in the fall, everything about it is wonderful. So stick with me, see if it does anything. Also, I know I'm getting them in really late, I know that. Uh, it is almost July, and um, in fact, I think tomorrow is July. So we'll see, we'll see, but the end of, October. October 31st is usually our last frost date here and that gives us 
all of July, all of August, all of September, and all of October. That's four full months, and uh, <laughs> my dog is coming down through the tree, through the trees. Um, that gives us four full months. That's 120 days. Some of these need 110 days, but that's the most. So we should be good. We should be good. I should be able to have lots of pumpkins out uh, in about for fall uh, and all of its wonderful celebrating that happens. So we'll see. This also gets lots of sun. It's a big open field. Uh, I am going to be coming up here this fall and just, or this summer, once I get done with my other projects and really taking care of this area, uh, I'm going to redo this fence completely. I don't know if you can see, but it's it's just not really well done. It's not really attached to anything. And I want to just enclose this whole thing and then I want to put um, barbed wire on top of it so that if the deer do decide that they want to come in here, uh, there's just that much more of a deterrent. On a side note, I could just watch these goats all day. They are so cute. And they love playing with Crystal. <laughs> My father-in-law built them a little mountain for them to climb on right there. And they love climbing on that stump too. So we've got Chardonnay is the light colored one. And then this is Cookie on top. And they love each other. They're both girls. And they love Crystal, who is our new puppy. She's about eight months old now. Yeah, they're super cute. <laughs> okay, so that's going to do it, guys. I am going to go down and do some other projects. I'll probably video those, but put those in a different video. I hope you guys are having an absolutely wonderful summer. I hope that you're planting things and I hope that you are having a wonderful evening if you're seeing this during the evening. <laughs> anyway, stay blessed.